Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PMF The Fifth Element of Health. I am a former physics professor and 25 year energy medicine researcher. And I'm really excited about this video because we're gonna go through all the different theories of biological aging and then how PMF therapy can help. So let's get right into it. So in 1882, August Wiseman came up with this wear and tear theory of aging. And what he said was that kind of like a car that gets wear and tear with use, we just through life accumulate a lot of wear and tear damage through just the stresses of life and the process of aging. So the first theory within wear and tear is the free radical theory, which is one of the most popular theories of aging. And what this theory says is through just normal respiration of producing ATP, we create these free radical compounds that cause oxidative stress to our body much like how a car will rust or how an apple will brown if left out. And that is also oxidation and free radical damage. So from this theory, our body ages through this free radical damage, this accumulation of damage from free radical wear and tear, which again is kind of like a rusting to the body. The next theory is the cellular garbage theory. And this basically says from a wear and tear point of view that our bodies and cells just kind of accumulate toxins, debris, garbage, all kinds of cellular bacteria, viruses, etc. And this accumulation of, of garbage just sort of just mucks up our whole system and slows things down and causes aging. The next theory is the cross linkage or glycosylation theory of aging. What this theory says is that proteins in the body link up and cause damage to the cells. So you're familiar with the cross linkage theory because as we age, our skin becomes more tough and, and actually cross linkage happens in like leather and some type of nice furniture where the leather kind of hardens over time, right? That's cross linkage is happening. And it's a combination of oxidation, like from the free radical theory, along with in the body glucose. So this is where like diabetes will increase your risk for aging because it can initiate these cross linkages. And here's a little test you can do. If you pinch the skin right above your hand, notice how quickly it snaps back. If you don't have much cross linkage, it should just snap right back. As we get older and we pinch our skin, that little pinch mark will kind of stay there longer due to cross linkage. So just as our skin makes us look older through cross linkage, if we could see our internal organs, they would also look older through cross linkage damage. The next theory is the mitochondrial decline theory. And what this says is that the number of mitochondria within our cells declines with age. And because the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell that creates energy, if we have less mitochondria, we have less energy. We have less energy for cells to divide. We have less energy to detoxify. We have less energy for our cells to perform their normal daily function. And as a result, we grow old and die, you know, due to this decline in energy or mitochondria. Now the next major theory of aging, the next major category is the error theory or the somatic mutation theory. And what this says is we talked about the Hayflick limit. Remember that every time a cell divides, you know, the telomeres get shortened and we have a Hayflick limit. Well, there's another problem. Every time the cell divides, there can be errors or mutations in that division, which then creates accumulated error. And this is one of the major accepted theories of aging. Now, the program theory of aging is the next major, major category. And this is something we kind of talked about already in, in video number one with the Hayflick limit. And what this theory says is that we're kind of programmed to die. We're programmed, aging is programmed, and that death is a natural process of evolution. That when we go beyond sexual maturity, our ability to produce offspring declines with age. Therefore, nature kind of weeds us out, you could say. Now, that's kind of a cold view of, of, of nature and evolution, but this program theory of aging, like I said, the Hayflick limit has a lot of evidence to suggest that our cells only divide 40 to 60 times. And then the mechanism, like we talked about, is telomere shrinking. But there's a couple other program theories. One of them is endocrine. So our hormones tend to decline. Like it's been shown that after age 30, our like HGH levels, our sex hormones, DHEA, melatonin, many of our healthy hormones, you know, insulin is a hormone. These hormones decline with age, especially after age 30. Aging really starts to kick in. The next theory is the immune theory of aging. And, and this has got a lot of evidence as well. It shows that immunity decreases, which leaves us more vulnerable to disease as we age. And 
one of the most common proofs of this is how influenza or the common flu is one of the leading killers in this country. And it has to do with something that as a youth we can handle with no problem. When we're older, it can be something that's fatal because our immune system declines with age. So the next theory of aging is the metabolic theory. And the metabolic theory says that organisms with a lower metabolism, metabolic rate, will age slower than those that have a higher metabolic rate. And you can kind of think about this as the heartbeat theory of aging, meaning we have kind of a limited number of heartbeats. And little small animals and rodents, their, their heartbeats are going really, really fast. They got a super high metabolism and their lifespan is only a couple years, like four to five years for an average rodent, where larger animals have longer lifespans. Now this isn't an exact correlation, but for the most part, metabolism is related to basically how fast we age. So with this metabolic theory of aging, it's been shown that, for example, calorie restriction actually slows our metabolic rate, which slows down aging. In fact, calorie restriction studies done by Walford and many others across the board have shown like a 30 to 50% increase in lifespan when you radically reduce the calories. Now, there has not been a good human study on this, but pretty much many other animals that have been studies has shown calorie restriction is one of the ways that we can definitely increase our lifespan. And that has to do with when we reduce our calories, we lower our metabolism. Okay, so these are some of the main theories of aging. Now, in the last video, we talked about energy and space. So in this video, I want to get a little more specific and go through the seven ways that PMF therapy can help to combat these theories of biological aging. So let's start with energy and ATP synthesis. So there's actually two components here. PMF therapy has been research proven to increase ATP synthesis. There was a study done by Blank and Lednif that showed that PMF therapy, low frequency, low intensity PMF, increased ATPase activity, which then helped with the synthesis and production of ATP in the body. Also in the study, they talked about the mechanism for that was that low frequency, low intensity PMF signals opened ion channels that allowed calcium and different ions to go into the cells that were a big part of helping with energy creation in the mitochondria. And they further talk about in the study that even after PMF therapy for several hours, these ion channels remain open and ATP activity continues, which shows that PMF therapy benefits continue many hours after a session. There's also research to show that PMF therapy increases is mitochondria in the, in the cells. And to me, this is huge. And these are like the power plants or the power sources of, of energy in your cells. And like we just said, with aging, one of the theories of aging is that mitochondria declines with age. There was a study reported in Science Magazine in 2002 where, whereby it's kind of a complicated mechanism, but basically calcium and the protein kinase would combine to produce mitochondria in the cells. And what PMF does is it increases this flow of calcium to bind to this protein kinase, which then stimulates the production of mitochondria in the cells. I mean, again, this is huge. The fact that PMF therapy can actually increase the number of mitochondria, which means you're gonna have more power companies like in each cell, which produces more energy. And again, ATP is produced in the mitochondria. Now, the next thing that PMF does is it helps to lengthen the telomeres. As we talked about the Hayflick limit, one of the reasons why our cells only divide a limited number of times is that the telomeres will shorten a little bit every cell division. And there was a study done by Norman Sheely with PMF therapy. It was a higher frequency PMF, but still PMF, where he showed that telomeres regenerated three to 4% annually with PMF therapy. What this means is that our cells will be able to divide longer. The next thing that PMF therapy helps with is DNA synthesis and repair. So remember we talked about the error theory here. So every time the cells divide, DNA has to be synthesized. And if there's any errors in the transcription process, the body does have enzymes of error correction. There's a study done by Ozawa and Bodomali which showed that PMF therapy increased DNA synthesis and mRNA synthesis in bones. And also in the same study, they talked about how it increased DNA synthesis in cartilage cells as well. And one of the things that they were seeing was that it's almost like PMF will help to electrify the DNA, meaning it helps with the movement of electrons up and down the DNA molecule, which is giving the DNA more energy to do transcription and to divide and create DNA synthesis so that the cells can divide without error. The next way that PMF can help with aging is with antioxidants and detox. There is a study done by Singh, Kanduja, and Mittal in 1998. And what they found was that PMF therapy increased glutathione in the lungs significantly along with other endogenous antioxidants. Now glutathione also helps with detoxification in the liver as do some other antioxidants. So 
PMF therapy is also working with some of these endogenous antioxidants in your liver to help to detoxify. But again, with the free radical theory of aging, antioxidants are kind of like rust proofing your body. So increasing antioxidants in the body, PMF therapy is definitely helping to combat aging. The next thing that PMF helps with is improving blood sugar and controlling blood sugar levels in the blood through its action on insulin. And you know, we've seen a lot of testimonials of people that have diabetes control their blood sugar with PMF. And like I said, the cross linkage theory of aging needs sugar to create those cross links with the proteins and oxygen oxidation. So when we can limit the amount of sugar in our blood, we are slowing down the aging process. So people that are diabetic are, do experience an accelerated aging and they have a lower lifespan. So PMF therapy by helping with blood sugar metabolism is taking the sugar out of the blood and helping the cells to be less insulin resistant so that way sugar can get into the mitochondria to be burned as energy instead of floating around in the blood and causing cross linkage and other types of damage. The next way PMF can help is with enhanced immunity. There was a study done by Whitney in 1972 that showed that PMF therapy will increase the cell division of lymphocytes or white blood cells in culture. So it was almost like PMF was energizing these white blood cells and giving them enough energy so they can continue to divide. And without PMF therapy taken out of the body, these blood cells just die. So we have seen some great benefits of PMF with infections and different types of infectious diseases. And we know PMF definitely helps to boost the immune system. And so like I said, one of the theories of aging is that as we age, our immune system declines. So by improving immunity, it's a really big benefit of PMF. And finally, and we got number seven is stem cells. There was a study done by Zhao and Jing in China in 2002, where they found that PMF therapy increased stem cell production by 40 to 59%. That's huge. And stem cells, again, help to regenerate tissue. That's why there's all this talk about embryonic stem cell therapy, because when you give the body more stem cells, you have the ability to regenerate your, your tissue more. And as we age, our stem cells decline because we should have a normal reservoir of stem cells in our tissues so that way if we hurt ourselves, the stem cells will differentiate and create new tissue. So again, this is all about regeneration. PMF is helping the body to heal and regenerate, which does decline with age. As we get older, our ability to regenerate slows down. Like if you break a bone, it, it heals a lot slower as we age. So again, when you give the cells more energy, as what PMF does, is it stimulates the stem cell activity and division and differentiation so that your body heals itself. It's also noteworthy that NASA did a study on PMF and found that a 10 hertz square wave stimulated neural cell regeneration up to 400%. And they used a low frequency, low intensity signal. So again, don't think that more is better. And I just want to comment too that another, I didn't put this in the top seven, but another reason that PMF helps with combating aging is that it improves microcirculation. And so that means that it's going to help to get oxygen and nutrients down into the cells and waste products out. So like we talked about, it's going to help to give the cells more energy by bringing oxygen and nutrients into the mitochondria to produce energy. And then it'll help the bodies and the tissues and the cells to create more space by helping to detoxify all those metabolic waste products and help to remove all the toxins from the cells and the tissues and the organs to be removed out the elimination channels. So in conclusion, like we talked about in the last video, even though there's a lot of theories of aging, it really comes down to energy and space. When you give the body, tissues, organs, and cells more energy and more space, the cells can div divide at least 40 to 60 times, and you can get your maximum biological potential of 120 years. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to my channel and leave some comments, and have a great rest of your day.